All right. You guys are already in the station rotation groups you're going to stay in today. So this will be station rotation one, two, three, and four. Um, each of the rotations has... I think there's a lot of reasons why it's effective. I know for me, there's really clear reasons why I do it. You know, a lot of teachers are dealing with large class sizes, and it can be really challenging to personalize instruction, to differentiate instruction for really varied skill levels. So for me, it creates these smaller learning communities within the larger class and creates more opportunities for me to work with small groups of students. There can be multiple stations that don't require technology or have technology. They're completely offline stations and that flexibility makes it really attractive for a lot of teachers, particularly those of us who don't have a ton of technology at our disposal. And so what I tell teachers when I'm training is go horizontal with your agenda, which means lots of teachers plan their lessons with a linear agenda. We're going to do this first, and then this, and then that. And they might have three or four tasks on the agenda for that day. And so my idea is if you kind of go horizontal and you just take each of those tasks and make it a station, it's an easier way to kind of go from a traditional lesson plan to a blended lesson plan. So if we're going to read an article, if we're going to have a discussion, if we're going to go over grammar, why not have a small student-led discussion group, a small group reading and doing annotating, and then one group over here doing the online grammar piece. So we're still getting through everything that would be in a traditional agenda, but it's happening in stations as opposed to us walking through it kind of lockstep as a class. And when you move through a lesson lockstep as a class, there are fewer opportunities for kids to get support, ask questions, and so stations just create that kind of natural environment where kids can collaborate, they can problem solve together and ask each other questions. So for station one, they were doing a blast on audience, purpose, and style, and they are working on an argumentative piece for me uh, about a topic of their choice, some debatable issue, and so they had a better understanding of different styles and different purposes. And then after that, I had them thinking about, after they blasted out their response to the question, I had them thinking about the argumentative piece they're writing for me and start thinking, who's your audience? What style is appropriate for this audience? They're going to be writing a vignette because they're reading House on Mango Street. It's just a series of vignettes. And that's been really challenging for them because it's an unconventional structure or style of writing. And so I wanted them to know what a vignette was. And I was checking out the blast at support writing. And I thought, okay, if they're going to do anything well, I want them to do the description, the, really, the sensory rich details and stuff in their vignettes. So that's why I chose that one. The blasts are just really nice, fun, kind of bite-sized pieces of information. And so when we're tackling specific pieces of writing, if there's a blast on it where I can just kind of expose them to some quick information, get them thinking about it, it's an ideal way to introduce a topic before I'm actually asking them to write to a specific audience or for a specific purpose or using a particular style. I like that it is more interactive. You get to see what your peers um, put in as well, and then you get to review it and have other people review your work as well, and that you're using technology and it is not using paper and writing. It's actually having a screen in front of you, which is kind of like a safe haven for us sometimes. This group over here is gonna be watching a grammar video on commas and compound sentences. If you guys have the split earbuds, that would work better than having the volume. I up, went so right I into the grammar workbook that's part of Study Sync and found a lesson on commas and compound sentences because I had done a pre-assessment and that was an area they were really weak on. And then after their first couple pieces of writing, it's definitely an area that they needed practice on. So then I went into the grammar workbook and reviewed the explanation of commas and compound sentences, created my video from there so it was kind of, they could watch it at their own pace and pause it, and then I literally used one of the, the practice sheets and just made copies of it so that they could apply what they had seen in the video. The word and is a coordinating conjunction, and coordinating conjunctions are like the glue that hold two main clauses together when you're building a compound sentence. So a lot of teachers, when they hear about the flipped classroom, they like the idea of it, the, the whole purpose of it, but they're concerned that kids don't have access to technology outside the classroom. And so one way to kind of combat that, if you would like to allow students to pace their own learning, whether watching a video or reading something, is to use one of the stations, the online learning stations, to allow them to watch a video. 